going ahead of you. Epic. Epic. Come on, please. Epic. the upper path up to the area that we cleared with the forestry mulcher so it's about 800 feet as the crow flies the route we have to take is probably close to a thousand feet um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a chore uh, right now I got the wagon hooked up to the mower supervisors helping uh, we need to bring an IBC tote up to the up to that area so we can fill it with water so that the pigs can have uh, water up there so here we are, by the IBC Tills. I'll get this loaded up on the wagon and then we'll drive it up there and we will unload it. So it's super windy. I'm not sure if that's gonna pick up and my neighbors right there are also mowing their lawn So it's a perfect storm Or not yet a storm it will be uh, So we got the tote up here. We got it on some pavers. It's pretty level um, It's not moving too much. So if this ends up being inside of a pig paddock What we're gonna do is I'll just uh, zip tie a piece of plywood to the front so they can't hit the nozzle and then once that thing's full of water it's 275 gallons at uh, eight pounds a gallon. So what is that? Almost 2,000 pounds. The pigs are not going to move that thing. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it being inside of a paddock or them damaging it. But uh, we do have to get it filled up, which is going to be a chore. Uh, but I think I'll go get the nets. We'll set the nets up for the first paddock. Their first paddock is going to be down there in the corner. So it's a ways away. Um, but we'll run a hose from here. So we'll get the nets. We'll get those set up and then we'll figure out how the heck we're going to get water up here. I went and got 300 foot of hose last night, uh, but I still don't have enough to get to the IBC tow. So way down there is the camper. And right behind me between those trees is the IBC tow we brought up yesterday. So I had to bring another one up because I'm probably, oh, I don't know. One more 100 foot length would get me really close. I got about probably 450 feet of hose stretched out uh, and it's not quite enough. So I'm gonna have to piggyback, which it'll take a little bit longer, but I guess it is what it is. Um, that's all the hose they had at the store. So uh, I couldn't buy more even if I wanted to, but I thought three was gonna be enough. So uh, I am gonna run down and start the pump. Uh, I'll leave you guys here. You gonna watch the barrel and watch it fill up. All right, well, we're gonna start this, but it wasn't supposed to start raining until about nine o'clock and it's 7.45. So um, I don't know how long I can keep the camera out here, but. Let's fire this up.
All right, so I was driving up to go set up the um, the nets and saw something. Well, I've seen it before, but that I'll show you guys. So all these cedar trees that we've been cutting down, this hedgerow and everything else, there's been some comments that the people say like, oh, you should keep them and they're good coverage or whatever else. The reason we're not is, so this is our big pasture, right? It's about uh, seven acres or so. And this is what's in our pasture. Uh, just from, there was nothing here last year. So you can see there's the cedar right here, that red. There's one, two, three. There's one there. There's one there. So that's just in one small area that these cedars are popping up everywhere. So they're so invasive. This is why we're attempting to get rid of all the cedars on this property because if we don't, they'll take over. And had we not bought this place when we did, probably what this whole place would have looked like that and have been more work. So that is proof that these cedars need to go and they are not good. Okay, so you can see we got the net set up, same size paddocks we've been doing. Um, one of the reasons we did the we didn't mind doing the forestry mulcher is because we're gonna put the pigs in here. So all this mulch, the pigs are gonna trample, push down in the dirt, the mud, and then it's gonna break down faster um, so we can grow grass. If we weren't gonna put the pigs up here, we probably wouldn't have done the forestry mulcher. Um, and then some of these big, bigger branches and stuff. Our plan is once the pigs go through here, we'll come in with the mower and the wagon and we'll pick up all the big chunks uh, that won't break down, the bigger chunks, because it got so thick when he was mulching in here that he can't get to the bottom. So uh, him and I talked that if he came back through here one more time, it would totally mulch everything a lot smaller um, and that would break down a lot faster. But since we're gonna move the pigs, I don't mind so much. There is a couple logs that he told me he wasn't gonna be able to mulch, uh, but he knocked them over with the mulcher so he could get the stumps for us. Uh, so those ones we'll have to cut up and get out of here. But overall, the pigs will do a lot of this work and it won't be, it won't really be a, a big issue. So we'll run four paddocks up the fence line and then turn and come down. And that'll be for the girls and they'll just rotate that and then the boys will be next to them. And then uh, when we get our piglets and they're weaned, we'll put them next uh, next to that so we'll run three wide which will be six paddocks wide um, and next spring this will grow back grass really nicely um, because we're not going to keep the pigs here this winter um, we've been going back and forth on building a pole barn but we got some new animals in the works uh, and we don't want to leave them on pasture uh, for the winter so drop a comment down below guessing what our new animals are, but we should hopefully get them uh, within the next couple months. And we'll need a place to put them in the winter. So the plan is to build a pole barn big enough for the pigs and the new animals. Uh, and then that way we won't have to worry about the muddy mess that we've been dealing with all year. Come on, pigs. Come on, pigs. So they don't like shoots, so it's gonna be kind of tough to get them come through this door. Come on. Please. I don't know. Come on, Pete. These two are probably gonna come in here a lot easier. We may put this in the boys' paddock and feed them in it so that they get used to it. Come on, please.
Epic. Oh, big. They're genuinely curious. So, generally curious. Genuinely. <coughs> I woke up at 3.30 today, so a little out of it. <coughs> Come on, pigs. Hey, pig. Come on, pig. Come on, pigs. Hey, pig. Back here or up there, one of the two. All right, so they're not wanting to go in. Obviously, we kind of figured that would happen, but they like to follow me. So I think what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take the bucket. Tina's going to lift the net. We're just going to try to walk them up there. We got to go way up there. So we'll see how it goes. They'll probably be distracted with the grass and everything. That's the only yeah. thing. Come on, Pete. Come on. Go. <laughs> going ahead of you. Epic. Epic. Come on, Pete. Epic. That did not go as planned, so I don't know what Tina was trying to film and we were trying to chase pigs, so I don't know what we actually got. Uh, I guess I'll find out when I edit, but we got the pigs back in their paddock. Um, so we got to put some feed, one feed bowl inside of there and we put the net around it. So that's where I'm gonna feed them. Um, I'll hang out out here for the, I don't know, the next 15, 20 minutes. If they don't go in, I'll just feed them inside of this and we'll try to move them again tomorrow. Uh, the, they only know this area down here. That's the only area that they've been. So they've cleared even all that green, basically from the mulch, that's our driveway this way. They've cleared all of this area. So this is the only area they've been for the last almost a year. When did we get them? July, middle of July last year. So it's like eight months. Um, so it's the only area they know but we'll get them up there eventually. It'll just take some time. Hi. Okay. Okay, that's it, huh? No, that's it. Hey. So I guess I'll go over and pump more water while we wait. I'll leave you guys there. You can watch the pigs and We'll see if they go in, I guess.
Well, as luck would have it, we just got back from going to town. We had to get propane for the camper, and I had to get fuel for the mower. I had to get some stuff from the grocery store and I walked over to feed the pigs and I said, hey pigs, and they both walked into the chicken tractor. So it is raining out now and I'm going to attempt to move them. Um, guess we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna fire up the mower, I'll drive over there and then we'll pick it back up. All right, so here they are, just hanging out. Of course, they rooted up, so it's gonna be tough to close their door. All right, let's see if I can't push this thing forward. Come on, fix. Come on. I got a ratchet strap on the door. I got their feeder. I just kind of got it roped there, so hopefully they'll follow that. I gotta hook the mower up and I'm gonna go for it. They're in there, so.
can't go any farther. We're stuck. I left the other bucket though. Yeah, I'll go get it. Oh, okay. Come on, pigs. Hey, pigs. Hey, pigs. Come on, pigs. Hey, pigs. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> the camera shows 23 minutes 23 minutes from the time we got them in basically to get up here so i gotta go get an energizer um because we need to get this fence on before too long we don't want them in here too long testing the fence but they should be okay while i go get that and then i'll come back for this chicken tractor that we use but we finally got one half of the puzzle up here <laughs> and that was a chore and of course it's pouring rain when we're doing it so i'm gonna go get the energizer and we'll pick this back up when i come back Well, we did it. Mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. I need to get, it's still raining out here. I don't know if, I'm sure it picks up on camera. Um, I'm soaked. Tina at least has an umbrella with the baby to say. A little bit more dry and she was walking so her pants aren't wet. My pants are drenched. Um, but I gotta get their water up here yet and I gotta get their shelter up here. So I didn't bring their water earlier and on our way back from town we talked about being glad that we didn't because we would have had to dump it out and then leave it down there for them but now that they're up here we can get them water so i have to somehow oh, i think the camera just picked that up maybe she just chucked her feed bowl uh, they'd rather eat off the ground i guess so we'll go get the shelter and the water and then I think we'll call it for the day and then we'll check back in with them in the morning make sure they didn't get out and make sure they're good all right shelter's in water's in i'm soaked tina soaked baby soaked riley soaked and muddy pigs are soaked and muddy but they're used to it so we're calling it for the day i'll update in the morning with how they're doing what time is it you think Six o'clock? Oh, I don't know. Probably. We didn't get home till five. Probably yeah. after six o'clock. Six thirty. I don't know. It's late. Late ish to be out here. And the rain's picking up. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Alright, well I came out to get eggs. It's been about an hour since we last filmed. Um got twenty three eggs today, but I figure I'd give an update. So Mr. Wilmer here has been in solitary confinement for oh, five days or so. Uh, he was attacking Tina when she was going in to collect eggs or going in to check on the chickens. So we're trying solitary confinement before he ends up in freezer confinement. Uh, but we'll reintroduce him tonight to see if he kind of mellows out and chills out. But I'll, uh, when I come back out to move the chickens later, I'll I'll reintroduce them to the flock. All right, well, I came out here to move the chickens. We put Wilmer back in. He just went right to 
the roost. And I suppose we will check in on them in the morning and see if he has mellowed out at all. Well, okay. it is the next morning and I came out here to check on the chickens and Wilmer is MIA. I don't have any idea where he is. So I don't know if he flew out of the net last night, but he's not in here. So uh, I'll go check down in the crate that he was in. Maybe he ended up getting back there or maybe he wandered off, I guess. See if I can find him and then we'll try to update this video uh, before we put it out, if whether or not uh, we have found him or not. I gotta get their other bucket up here, but we'll just give them one bucket for now. They seem to be doing all right. They stayed in last night. They're rooting up, packing stuff down. So all seems to be well. The next uh, task would be moving the boys up here. And I don't think they're gonna move as easy as the girls, but I could probably still pick them up. I don't know, they probably weigh 100 pounds, maybe more, but I might still be able to pick them up, so I don't know. Uh, that's where we're going to leave this uh, adventure with the pigs. So uh, we're going to take the afternoon off and go on a little adventure of our own. So we'll put that in here. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoy. We are at Bright's Zoo today and it is the home of one of the only giraffes with no spots, which is kind of fun. So apparently this spotless giraffe is the first one that's been born since 1972, I think. So over 50 years and the last one was in Japan. So kind of cool. Uh, we signed up to do a feeding at four o'clock. So we're gonna check out the rest of the zoo and then we'll go see this spotless giraffe.
Good It's got a rough tongue, huh? <laughs> well, the spotted giraffe is there. We could not feed that one. Uh, it's too small. So there are a couple of the babies that were two years old. They can't get their heads over the railing. So we weren't allowed to feed. I was allowed to feed them, but the spotless giraffe is pretty cool. It doesn't really look like a giraffe. It looks kind of like a horse or something. It does. But it's kind of, <laughs> it's really short, like a stubby horse or something.